Our tour continues in the tool room. Back in the old days, of course, everything was made by hand. All these tools were made by hand and the tools were used by hand. This is a broad axe. This is probably the most prominent tool that they used in creating these vessels back in those days. They would take a tree in the woods and they would get their broad axe. You see it kind of has a tilt to the handle there. And they would stand on top of the log and they would chop down and chop down until they had a flat place. Then they would roll that log up, chop down and chop down again until they had another flat place until they squared that log. Then they would be able to use that and hew it into frames and into planking. Here's the ads, the typical carpenter's ads. These are lining ads here. That's common ads where they would use that to create the curves on the frames that they would use to build the vessel. Then, of course, they could take these great big saws and two-man saws and saw planking out. When they would get the vessel planked up, of course, one of the most prominent things that you had to do would be to caulk it. This is a demonstration of caulking. And they used to take cotton, plain, plain old cotton like that, tuck it into the seams very tightly with a little cut iron that would drive it down into the very bottom of that seam. Then they would take oakum on top of that. This is what the sailors would call it angel hair, oakum. And they would drive it into the seam with that horse and this great big beetle here. Drive it in until it was way tightly into the very back of that seam. Then with a little, little tar over the outside of it, when it all got wet, it would swell together and keep the vessel tight. This is a raw skein of oakum right here. Has a wonderful smell to it. It's all dipped in pine tar. And of course, this is what the ladies of the evening used to use. It smelled so good, and when the sailors would come ashore, they would rub that on their skin, and it would make them feel right at home. On these hallowed grounds here at the old snow shipyard, they built so many, many great big wooden vessels. And during the war, they became very busy for the war effort. But unfortunately, they had a fire in their shop and it burned their bandsaw, the bandsaw, the great big ship saw that they used to saw out all these big timbers. It burned that, that uh, bandsaw up and they couldn't replace it because during the war, all the steel would be used for tanks and guns. So in desperation, the men in the yard, the shipwrights in the yard, built their own bandsaw out of wood. It's probably the only ship saw built of wood in existence. This was built right here on the snow yard so that they could keep up production building wooden mine sweeps and net tenders for the war effort. Here we have a very unusual display. This is called a stability calculator. This is a tray here with a schematic of the motor ship Port Lincoln on it. All of the, the cargo spaces are computed, the amount of cargo in tonnage that they're supposed to carry. And here are little weights, little, little weights that are marked for the tonnage that we're going to put on that vessel as we prepare it to go to sea. And we would distribute them all around in the different compartments for, for where we're going to stow her cargo down at the bottom here. These are counterweights for, lead, for ballast, water, water ballast down here. When the, when the ballast tank is empty, they would flip those up. If the ballast tank's filled, they would flip those down. Then they could adjust this so that the tray is level and they would know that the vessel wouldn't have any kind of a heel, angle of heel, and it would be proper to go to sea and not roll over. This is the way they did it back before the age of computers.